Cullen live in one minute. Welcome to Lynn Cullen Live at PGHCityPaper.com. Email your questions and comments to Lynn at PGHCityPaper.com. Okay, we are here. That would be uh, Mr. Christopher. What's your middle name? I'm not telling you my middle name. People be stealing my identity out there and stuff. (laughs) Mr. Christopher Potter, editor of Pittsburgh City Paper, and yours truly, uh, Lynn Cullen. And Lynn is my middle name. Actually, I feel like somebody already stole my identity today. I just <laughs> Listen, you're right. I'm just, I'm just gray and, 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 yeah, and yeah, undifferentiated yeah. things. So, uh, yeah, maybe it's already happened. Well, speaking of that, let us yeah. go directly to, I mean, part of that fear of identity theft and it has to do with, of course, technology yeah. and all sure. of that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. Yeah. So are you, what did you make of the, of the, uh, of the uh, what do you call that thing, Wall Street? Did you see that Wall Street went kaplooey yesterday afternoon? Oh, uh uh-uh. No. No, you didn't see it. No, so yeah, what happened? Oh, dear. Yes. USA Today says Twitter terror Oh, I did hear something about that. Rocks Wall Street. Okay, this is amazing. And it's, uh, I don't know, that markets should be based on this kind of thing Mm -hmm. and this at... Exactly 107 yesterday afternoon. Okay. Uh, it appeared that the Associated Press on its Twitter account sent this Breaking two explosions in the White House and Barack Obama is injured. Almost immediately, yeah. uh-huh. the Dow plummets. Plummets. How many points? Two, well, almost 697, 5, 6, about 130 points, right? 100 and, yeah. 130 points okay. in two minutes. Yeah, okay. Okay. And then it bounces so right the back AP up. Ca- then someone at AP sees this, and at 110, the first one goes out at 107, Dow plunges 130 plus, blah, 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 and at 110, someone... T- tweets this from AP. Please ignore AP tweet on explosions. We've been hacked. There you go. Dow returns to right where it was within <laughs> five minutes. You, you know what's you know what's going to happen now is CNN and the New York Post are going to come are going to claim that they were hacked. <laughs> That's why they yes. Except it was just on their front page <laughs> and in all the stories that they did for two days. Well. The thing is, so Wall Street responds to an unsubstantiated. Now, granted, it comes from AP, which has some. That's a bit of credibility. Credibility. Think, you know? um, but apparently, a ton of money got lost in those yeah. four or five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. One would think. The hackers are believed to be some Syrian guys. Now, here's the other thing I just want to say about what? that. So the original thing said two explosions in White House, Barack Obama injured. Yes. Now, if you're gonna, if you're a Syrian terrorist making stuff up, a you Syrian hacker, dead. why? Yeah, well, why are you setting your sights so low? You know what I mean? Like, why are you, why aren't you going for the whole hog there? Maybe they thought people wouldn't believe it. Maybe that. Well, no, it, I I don't know, but I, the graph. Is amazing. I mean, I don't know if you can see that. See that plummet, that red line? That's what happened. Kaplooey, and then right back up again. Yeah. And meanwhile, I forget what they said, but they said 
it erased like that two hundred billion dollars. Well, didn't, didn't, in the market value. Did that recreate yes, itself when it went back up? Yes, but then some came back up, but yeah. not the same people who lost. Ah, uh, well, recovered. another day on the street. Why should a... It, I mean, it's just amazing. What is it? We're, we're right back to... Uh, in this information age, it's almost like we're right back to when there weren't even telephones, when yeah. it was just people whispering in people's yeah. ears. and um, Or comets were and, visible in the sky or whatever. Right, or yeah. rumor, you know, yeah. from town to town, and it's acted upon. Well, you, I mean, you, I mean that's, the whole, that's the whole industry now, right? I mean, you look at how much stuff goes on. I mean, uh, there was a thing a year, a year or two ago, they, they spent a few billion dollars, I think, building a higher speed... You know, fiber cable, fiber optic cable line mm-hmm. between like New York and Chicago to accelerate trades by some, you know, oh, right. Minis- hundreds yeah. thousandths right. of a second or something right. like that. And you just think, really, this is important in the in the in the, in the infinite yeah. scheme of 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 what matters and of building sort of a lasting, sustainable economy. This is what we're doing. We're shaving off. We're spending all this money. There there are places See, even in America that lack solid internet access, let alone the rest of the world. But we got money for this. It's just you know, in those little uh, nanoseconds, there's millions upon millions of dollars to yeah. be made. It's. I mean, the other thing that's interesting is that you know, when I first when when you showed me that thing, I thought, oh, why did they have another one of the? They're supposed to have a a shut off or whatever when when computers begin to engage because you know there's this computer training tra- uh, trading that's all sort of set up on algorithms right. again and to it, take advantage of min- you know minuscule portions of a second, some little discrepancy versus pricing. I wonder how much longer that would have gone on before the because the thing will suspend trading automatically once you you hit a certain loss at a in a certain time frame. I well, I don't know. If that kicked in. I, yeah, probably I, not I, I after just so. a minute. After I don't two think two minutes so. or whatever. It probably no. wouldn't. Yeah. Huh. But um, so, but it shows how. Okay, so hackers can get into anything now. Yeah. And um, this kind of mischief could really set off panic. Mm. It'd make uh, Orson Welles' War of the Worlds look like pfft, nothing. Yeah. I don't know what the you realize. On the, the other hand, we've gotten ourselves into. I mean, the, the the defenders of the technology will say, "Look how quickly it corrected." Yeah, us. right. Fine. Here, uh, hi caller. Hello, Clarence from Canada. Hi, Clarence. Sorry to uh, jump in so quickly, but I have read something a couple of weeks ago about this high speed trading. Yeah. Yeah. That the um, some of the companies were complaining, some of the traders were complaining that their high speed wasn't getting in as fast as right. the other ones. Right. Because their cables were shorter. Right. They were living, they were further, I mean, longer. longer. They were further right. away <laughs> right. than the other guys. So now when they put those cables in, the cables all have to be the same length. Yeah. I mean, what, it's 186,000 miles a second. So yeah, I yeah it's so, so fast. Yeah. But it's still, there's still <laughs> yeah, that difference. That's the problem. I think they need to go back to the, like guys on the floor, you know, uh. Uh, with paper, like over here, over here, over here. That would have really? never happened if they I'll were doing that, if they actually, weren't, if it wasn't computerized. I'll tell you my solution is they what they ought to start really doing is taxing the taxing these transactions. Mm. Taxing and, and there's been talk about doing that especially in terms of global, you know, the shifting of cash across um, borders or whatever. You 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 inst- you install a, a small tax, just a flat rate on the amount of money that gets shipped from one country to the next in an electronic transfer. Doesn't have to be a huge amount for <laughs> high volume trades to generate a lot of money and then you use that money to do something like, you know, build solar or reforest, you know, various imperiled ecosystems or whatever. Um, well, maybe, and yeah, then it's and then it's a here. slight and then that also asks as a slight disincentive to moving these huge sums of money around on a on the drop of a, you know, not even a dime. <laughs> you know, the <laughs> something much 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 smaller than a dime. So Gosh, that would be that would be my solution. It just it seems like it seems like all of this. The upside of this is people are making money based on nothing. No, of course, nothing. Well, and nothing. yet, no Wall Street. And yet, the the potential uh, economic catastrophe, as we've seen, is is tremendous. Huge, it has huge. it's it's this thing where all the benefits are imaginary, but all the all the costs are real. Here's the thing: the computer programs can read the news. Yeah. No human being actually saw that tweet. The computer program read it and, 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 and traded stock. Are you on. kidding? Wait no. a minute. No person said, hey, guys, listen to this. No. Wow. If the computer program can read the news. They read that. So there was a computer program hooked up to Twitter? 
hooked up to everything. Well, no, hooked up to AP, yeah, yeah, yeah. AP Twitter, because yeah. yeah. that is the quickest way to get information now, Twitter, yeah. without a doubt. Yeah, I just heard that this I, morning. I said, well, holy cow. But I, you know, and, uh, 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 I, you know, as soon as I started the Lynn Collins show, I thought of Sam and our robot overlords. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, yeah, I think of them more and more and more. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Thanks, man. Okay, you're All done. Right. Bye. Bye. Do you think there are computers listening to this show? You know, listen, if there aren't, they will be in another, uh, you know, six weeks. Maybe it we, is on what? We oh, could. On a I got an idea. Right. We could get a, we could, we could rumor some stuff Rumors. and then, and then, and then short sell it. And then when the, when the rumor proves untrue, we cash in or whatever. See? You we know, could just talk down some companies, like, you know. I think you should take your sizable, uh, you know, <laughs> mental uh, capacity and work on this a little bit. <laughs> Don't just shoot from the hip here in front right, of everybody. Right. Yeah, know. now everybody's going to have the idea. Now you're going to have callers calling in to talk down their investments or whatever. God almighty. Yeah, <laughs> what a world. So a computer's running everything. Okay, so it's like... Yeah. Oh, God, Daisy, Daisy. <laughs> Very good, Give yes. Give me your yeah. answer, dude. Yeah. You know, I was just thinking, oh, we got another call. This could be from somebody wanting to talk about a good stock pick here. Hello. Hey, Lynn. Hi. Hey, the machines yeah, are Mr. listening. Potter. What's up? Uh, George and Moan. Hi, yeah. George. Hi. Uh, I see a broader issue in this. I don't see, uh, I'm connecting some dots here. We had an experience with a friend. Uh, that works in a think tank in Germany, and we got a uh, Facebook comment from them that said that, um, and they were laughing hysterically and everything, Sarah Palin um, says the U.S. should declare war on the Czech Republic. (laughs) And they were reacting to it. Now, she didn't really, wait, she didn't really say that, right? Here's my summation of it. I'm saying... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Another example of people not checking sources. Yeah, right. No Number pun one, right. checking. journalists oh, should absolutely checking. do that as a professional qualification. <laughs> but me as a skeptic, I do it all the time, especially yeah. when it comes yeah, to the yeah. Internet. Yeah, yeah, and, absolutely. And things that people say, but it's absolutely 100% with the Internet. Yeah. I will verify something before it. But this was something that was put out there by uh, Daily Current. As a uh, as a joke, yeah, it hasn't and this it happened was before. Up by the internet, no, it happens spread all, throughout the world. It yeah. happens all the time that these, you know, the Onion or something like the, the Chinese yes. government will pick up on an Onion story and and you know respond and react. Oh. And I mean, this happens all the time. Even right. more than that, even uh, some. I think I can't remember which American media outlet it was, but it was a reputable outlet. I think it was maybe like the Boston Globe or something like that. And the reason is, it's the same thing because a lot of these sites have sort of a news feed where they basically trawl the internet for breaking stories reported elsewhere and that's automated so it's automatically picking up these stories from other places and not doing see these robot overlords are dimwits in in some respects for now yeah i don't think it's i don't think it's the robot overlords i think it's the stupid backward people yeah. and, 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 it's, nef- yeah. and some of them with nefarious intent some yeah. and then some and so i think We've become a high technology world society, but the people in it are still the village idiots. I have said, and I'll say it again, all we are is cavemen with smartphones. And the no, other... exactly. Worse than that. Well, we're that's like, what they, yeah. I we're mean... scratching in the mud. This is we're back to a primitive village in which a rumor goes around. That's yeah, right. Sure. And yeah. somebody said, you know, Harry raped this girl or stole this horse. Let's go get Harry. No, know. I know, and there, and I, we were talking. I was talking about that yesterday. The sort of, you know, it, Twitter allows, and the internet allows for a, a sort of like lynch mob mentality to exactly. uh, to, exactly. to exist. And the stock market, I'm not surprised at all about oh, that. Oh no, because there's you know, just one big rumor mill. Yeah, and, and reaction. You, you right. know, you touch them and they react. They're just that's you right. Know, yeah, it's like they'll like get a, an erection one minute, then they'll go, they'll cut their throat the next. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. uh, based on nobody checking their facts. Right, and and especially the journalist profession is very good at that today. Um, Thank among, you. but I expect more from them, <laughs> except from the stupid people out there that right. react. My daughter did this in college with a, a thing that was separated. This is a high rank college with a bunch of smart women, and uh, somebody sent an email said that they were paying them 
to make um, to answer certain questions or to send out emails. And it was that old yeah, yeah. Sure. the email game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they swallowed it and they circulated throughout the college and they were all doing and I said, Kristen, stop and think about this. <laughs> Microsoft is not going to pay you some big bucks to circulate an email. Please <laughs> use your female brain power. <laughs> so I, I see it everywhere. Yeah. It's astonishing. Yeah. All right. So it's more than the stock market, I think. Oh, no, yeah. Oh, yeah. Much yeah. more. You're right. Okay. Thank Thanks you. for the call. Thanks, George. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think the other thing going on when an when a, when a American website does that is being, people being cheap. It's... It's news outlets who don't want to pay somebody to actually do the go and, and right. do the or even the or the even the canvassing checking. and just sort of making yeah. sure that yes, I'm picking this up from a legitimate that's right. source. So, and, and that's you know that's a problem. We've just uh, it's going to get too. worse. It ain't going to get better. It's going to yeah. get worse. You know, a lot of these things. There's this belief in uh, you know that these are all self-correcting systems, and to some extent, maybe they are. But I mean, I think what we saw this past week was both the you know the promise and the peril of it. You had those Reddit folks who were, I'm sure you talked about this. I did not talk about it because I raved so much about anonymous, and I, I thought, oh, well, you've done that yeah. rant a million times, but there yeah. it was again, yeah, right? There it was again. There it was, lynch mob. The most, I'll say, this is just something that's sort of been interesting to me. And there was a, uh, a reprinted at op-ed in the Post Gazette today, and it, I've just been thinking about this a lot. To me, like one of the most surreal moments of that whole thing last week was when the FBI finally released the pictures. There have been all this talk. You remember beforehand, there have been rumors these are dark-skinned people, and so there were people, you know, the Pam Gellers and the Islamophobes of the world who were like, "This is this is obviously Middle East terrorism." Da 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 da. And then there were people, uh, you know, more on our side of the debate who were like, "This is you know, this is gonna this is gonna be Tea Party or it's in Boston, it's on Patriot Day." Da 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 da. Right. Um, so the photos come out, and you would have thought at this point we could come to some sort of consensus on at least what it looked like we were dealing with. But in fact, everybody was looking at the same photos. And seeing something and else. And seeing two different... So you go on to like the... And I did this. You go on to like the Free Republic site. And those people were all like, these guys look like they stepped right off the plane from Yemen. And and and, and meanwhile, like on you know Daily Coast and some of our sites, you have people just saying like, these guys look... They could just be frat boys. They look like they probably listened to, to Rush Limbaugh. I da, said da, 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 da. Look like, they look like my brother used to look. They, yeah. they, they look like a million Jewish boys I right. know. They look right, like... Exactly. Yeah, right, exactly. I mean, I don't know. Who exactly. Could... I mean, the thing that... It, it was just, but it was just this sort of like amazing thing at how we could be looking at the, the same thing right in front of all of us. And, and, and not only did we not agree... We were actually more convinced that the other side was wrong than right. we were before the photos came out. And the FBI pointedly refused to do say anything like about ethnicity right. or height or weight or anything. They said, "Here are the pictures." Yep, here they are. Yeah, and of course, as we now know, I mean Chechnya. I mean, is basically in the Caucasus Mountains. Caucasus. They're more Where Caucasian, Caucasian than I am. Caucasian yeah, it comes from. It's That's a what a Caucasian thing. is. It's really funny. It is. It's, it's just, a... Yeah, I, I'm just, I'm still like, I'm still just like, I mean, if you just really think about it. And the weird thing was, before they released the photos, I just felt like these guys are like Schrodinger's terrorist. Like, right now. There are two possible things that we're going to do. You know what I mean? Like, who these guys turn out to be, what ethnicity they have, is just going to like it's going to shape just how people respond to this. The whole the whole tenor of the national debate is going to is going to hinge on the identity of these two guys, and and which is amazing, sort of not what they did. But who they were, and we're still seeing that. You're still seeing that with Republicans now saying, "Yeah, these guys can. don't deserve. This guy doesn't deserve a, a, a trial. A regular trial. He's a United He's States an American citizen. citizen. He, for, the, the crime is on American soil. How do you how do you abandon our our judicial system? Why? Because what is they're it Muslims. Them? That's why. So that so no matter no matter Muslims. what papers they have, no matter what process they've gone through, they're not real Americans. That's right. The ones, the ones who do right and don't do anything, yeah, we'll, we'll extend it to them for as until the moment they're actually accused of doing something wrong. And then all bets are off, and you find out really just how how far your American well, citizenship. Well, look at the really legislative. Uh, look at the congressional reaction to the Oklahoma City bombing. And once it was known, Timothy McVeigh. Right. Was there this rush? You know, that was a huge, that was the biggest terrorist attack in this country at that point. Right. Right? Right. Huge loss of life. Right. 
right. and absolute terrorism. Nothing. Yeah. There was nothing. Yeah. And when President Clinton, if I recall, alluded to the fact of these sort of right winger ideologies, right? Um, all hell, all, yeah, all hell broke loose, and then so so nothing else is said. If Timothy McVeigh had been, yeah, a dark skinned person from some country where we don't know exactly where that would be, and never even heard of it. All hell would have broken. Or, or take to a more so. timely example, this guy, the guy they now think or is now being rumored as the guy who sent the rice in. Oh, I want to talk about Okay, that. we can that get into that. Funny. Yeah. yeah, okay. Hello. Hello. Hi. You're probably going to disagree with me on this stuff. Okay. But uh, this immigration stuff, to me, I think this country has enough qualified people and educated people to take care of the jobs that are in this country. This load of crap, they keep pushing of education. 36 years ago, I worked for the P. E. Railroad. I had teachers working with me, yeah. engineers. There's a lot of educated people who never got jobs in those fields. Those fields aren't out there. There's only so many people. But what's this country want to do? They want to bring more people to this country. It doesn't work. We're full. We have to take care of what's here and the hell with the people that's coming through. I'm sorry, I disagree with that 100%. I think we have to take care of the people who are here. I mean, when we get, when it opens up and there's more jobs and more, because all you bring in is more poor people into the system, more welfare. I mean, it's not good for the country. Well, I think actually a lot of the immigrants that are coming in are better educated than most Americans. Actually, they are, aren't they? These are the ones that are taking... All you got to do is uh, walk around the CMU campus, or um, am I right? I Even mean, the, the technology companies are bringing in these, all of these Indians. All well, of you these. know why? What? Because they're it's cheaper. Mm, yeah. I don't know. I I agree with you in as much as I would say. There's so much talent in this country that is wasted because yes. we don't educate our own, because uh, we have failed our own people. Yes, yes. Yeah, and I mean, Bill Gates, he only reason he wants to bring people from overseas for cheap labor. He pays them thirty or forty thousand, which a job would probably pay eighty thousand, but he's getting for forty thousand. That's all it's about: cheap labor. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, I, you know, let's say that's let's take that argument though. I mean, let's say that's true, and let's let's just redirect it to sort of the you mentioned the poorer immigrants before. I mean, a lot of those folks are migrant workers out there doing doing jobs for very little pay, and I have my own feelings about that situation and and the exploit and the and the you know the the chances for exploitation there, but. Honest to God, I mean, if you were if you were paying American workers to do that stuff, the the rest of us would be paying more for our produce and everything else. So I mean, you, there's a there's a sort of broader issue here that we kind of have to think about when you think about the effect of immigration on a community. I mean, the other thing I'll say too is is that um, if if you're <laughs> uh, if you've got a lot of people coming in, what, one of the problems Europe has right now is that it's an aging population, and so they got a lot of old people who aren't. Um, who aren't contributing to the to the uh, well-being of of I mean they're just not working they're retired somebody's got to somebody's got to pay for those costs one reason America doesn't have that problem worse than we do now is because we've got immigrants who are coming in and helping to sort of supplement the birth rate and keeping the population the average age of the population lower than it might otherwise be. Yeah. So, I, caller, I hear you. It, it's a it's a huge subject though, and and sort of defies easy. Um, I don't know easy yeah. reactions. That's what I think. Keep yeah. your keep your mind open. I hear and you. And one last thing. Yeah. They say American workers won't take those jobs. The reason American workers won't take those jobs because they pay slave labor. Yeah. They okay. are the, the, the corporations and the businesses in this country are the new plantation owners. Well. Have a good day. Yeah, you, you too. too. <laughs> to some extent, yeah, I think I, we're. I mean, I think we. You agree uh, to yes. some extent, yeah, okay? Yeah. And and Melanie was just saying what uh, emailed about. She said, "How about the thousands of migrants who come and work on U.S. farms? Because no Americans will do that work." And she says, "I just saw a story about a California farmer who said I can't find Americans to do this work." And it's not just it's not just the the salary uh, right. the, the money right it's, it's the working back conditions back yeah. breaking yeah. It's labor yeah. it's back breaking labor that Melanie seems really I, smart I, I can just tell by this email she's really smart probably good looking too.
<laughs> just a guess. It's just you a guess. So? Yeah, sometimes you can just tell. You can tell, even though, I mean, if it were handwritten, you could get a sense. But yeah, how do you know? Uh, no, I see, uh, her I middle name is Anne. Did you know that? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, well, do you know they know what your wife <laughs> Melanie happens to be Potter's wife. Okay. Let's take a break. <laughs> okay, let's take a break. Ah, let's take a break. Email your questions and comments to Lynn at pghcitypaper.com or call Lynn at 412 316 3381. Lynn Cullen Live will return in a moment. It's warming up outside, so get to Littles for all your spring needs. Littles has everything for men, women, and children to stay in style for this upcoming hot summer. Lots of great colors from Dansko, New Balance, Steve Madden, and much, much more. Don't forget to come visit this season's colorful handbag selection as well. Little Shoes, Pittsburgh's largest family shoe store, 5850 Forbes Avenue in Squirrel Hill. Pittsburgh City Paper is seeking 10 local artists to design their own street box for our second annual public art project to be featured throughout the city of Pittsburgh. Go to www.pghcitypaper.com and click on the art box link for more details. The Pittsburgh City Paper Art Box Project, brought to you by the Westmoreland and Hill House Association. Now, it's back to Lynn Cullen Live at pghcitypaper.com. Okay, so when we, uh, you were saying something about the Ryson case, I just, before you get into that, I just want to say that obviously, you know, the guy who was originally charged has now been let go. And I was so disappointed because I loved the story of an Elvis impersonator saying, you know, it just... You don't like the story of an Elvis impersonator being exonerated? I think that's also noble. Okay. But now it appears that it might be another guy in town who really doesn't like the Elvis impersonator. They're both musicians. Both have different bands. They have disliked each other forever. And he, in fact, might be the guy who sent it and put this guy's initials on it. So he was trying to set him up. Who knows? That could be. Um, This is the funniest thing I've ever read. It's the last... Did, did you read this? No. It's the last sentence, or two, of the USA Today piece on the fact that the charges were dropped against the Elvis impersonator. Uh, the Elvis impersonator's name is Curtis, and the guy now who's uh, getting all the interest is a guy named Dutschke. Yeah. Okay? Okay. Dutschke said that he knows Curtis, but, but the two had a falling out. Dutschke said their last contact was in 2010 when Dutschke threatened to sue Curtis for saying he was a member of Mensa, a group for people with high IQs. Now, it's unclear there, but I think, does, are they saying, Dutschke saying he was going to sue this guy because he said Dutschke was a member or of Mensa? he Men- said he himself was a member. It's a little... You can't the reference sue is a little- somebody for... You could, I mean, I could, I could imagine a fraud thing if somehow you had some kind of contractual or other business relationship based uh, on the claim, but I can't imagine well, what that would be. No, no. And as I read it a second time, the way I read it the first time is that Curtis called Dutchkey a member of Mensa, and he took, took such umbrage. That's how I read it, yeah. because it says he, and you don't know which he yeah. they're talking yeah, yeah. That is not a good sentence. Yeah. It's unclear. I love the idea of, of somebody suing somebody because they were falsely accused of belonging of intelligence. to intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could see that. Would, that in could, this country in, today? In some communities, that could damage a person's reputation. Yes, indeedy. Oh, I don't know. Where, where did I see this? Oh, I know Dan Simpson wrote some piece today, and I was just sort of, he's, up, he's having fun in Amsterdam. Um, <laughs> Everybody. They live the high life over there at the Post Gazette, man. Yeah, they do. It's like, who's the one who always goes to London for stuff? Mackenzie Carpenter. She's always. Yeah, she's their uh, uh, Anglophile. Yeah. When the Queen came here, Mackenzie got chosen to. I can think of, like, all American print reporters, something to follow follow her around and stuff. But uh, Mackenzie's actually a very good choice for that because she is a Francophile. I mean, Francophile. The she would be the opposite. worst possible choice. Oh, then. my God. <laughs> no, an Anglophile. So, uh, 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 uh. anyway, you were saying. Oh, so it said that um, something about how the Netherlands, uh, ra- something just came out, you know, where they rank countries. The Netherlands came out number one 
in something, in just sort of like civilized life, in the wondrousness of existence, in happy people and wonderful children. I think it had to do with children. That, yes. that is yeah. what it did, right? Yeah. yeah. It had to do with children's well-being. So if you're a child and you're born uh, into the world, the sense was the best place to be born is the Netherlands. Mm. Where's yeah. the best place to be old today? I'd be curious about that. It might be, it'd probably be the same kind of a country. Yeah, yeah or right? Scandinavia. Or yeah, yeah, right. So where did the United States place? Not real well, I would imagine, among Okay, advanced. there were only 30 countries on the list. 26. Exactly right. Really? Oh, I just guessed, yeah. 26. Well, there you go. I mean, we should be so embarrassed. We're not, though. We never are. Twi- Why? <laughs> and we only, you know who we beat out? Romania, Slovenia, and, you know, like, I don't know, the Lower Hebrides. I, just un- <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> America, where we treat our children better than they treat their sheep, I guess. Yeah. Jeez. It is. I mean, and we don't take care of the old people either. I was just reading this thing. Take care of anything. Today, I was reading this thing today on my way in, and it's just like, we're all... The amount of money people actually put aside to take care of their own long-term care when they get old, like nursing home type stuff, it's completely inadequate. You know, people think, oh, I'll just be able to rely on Medicaid or whatever. And, you know, that's you basically have to burn through your whole savings before you can do that. Um, you know, it's just it's just it you really just wonder. Is. And, and for somebody, you know, for somebody like me, say, I mean, I'm just, I'm not old yet, but Getting I'm there. in my 40s. You got to start uh-huh. thinking about that more pressingly. I've got, you know, parents to think about. I've got a kid to do this stuff. And it's just, you know, I don't it, you just wonder how anybody is supposed to hold it together, how any of us actually make it, because I don't. You know, and then you get these guys. You don't guys. get any help. You don't get much help. And then That's you get these guys on TV who are just like, "You should be saving a million dollars." And it's just like, if I if I if I spent money on nothing, and 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 just took every dollar I earned and put it into a bank account or whatever, I wouldn't have a million dollars by the time I reached retirement. And age. it's not like you live high on the hall. No, no, I drive a car that dates back to the Bush administration, first term. Yeah, and we have just one of those. And we look, don't have he, cable. Wears, he wears clothes from you know. Thrift stores. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> you know, my wife is listening to this show. <laughs> Hi, Mel. <laughs> okay. So, it's, I, I don't know. So, the uh, sequester, oh, which, yes. you know, we were shaking in our boots about it. Then it came and nobody noticed anything. At except first, little yeah. people at the bottom right. quickly noticed because... Right. I don't know what uh, programs they depended on to live disappeared overnight. Right. But whoever hears anything from those people Um, and the Republicans were saying, see, it's no big deal. No big deal. Right. All of a sudden. The airplanes aren't running on time and Republicans are screaming bloody murder. The sequester has hit the airline industry, Mm -hmm. where 10% of the uh, air traffic controllers are furloughed uh, in every shift because they can't afford to pay them. And did you hear all the caterwauling in Congress? This has to be fixed immediately! As soon as it hits them, they pay attention. Yep. Yep. Well, maybe, do you think? This would get them to. Nope. <laughs> That's what I thought. They'll just do. They'll just do what they always do, which is they'll say that there's something else the Obama administration should be doing, and that they're politicizing the issue, and blah blah blah, and that you know. That's what they'll do. I want to say this. I think furloughing air traffic controllers strikes me That's as scary. Stupid. Yeah. As scary. Yeah. Because here's why. It's um, that means an airplane yeah, <laughs> with people in it. With people in it, <laughs> and it it means that the, you, may, you have fewer air traffic controllers keeping track of all that, and the ones you have might be tired. Yeah, might, yep. maybe working a little longer to make up, and they're under a lot of pressure. And the next thing you know, oops, somebody makes a mistake, and people die. Yep. Now, if Republicans die or a senator dies, then maybe we could get something done. So maybe they'd be sacrificed yeah, for the consider greater Consider the good. collateral damage, though. 
Well, you know, the world is rough. <laughs> <laughs> More bleeding heart commentary from Lynn Cullen. <clears throat> so, um, Max Baucus has decided to... Uh, Leave the caucus? <laughs> That's correct. Baucus leaves the caucus. Well, he's leaving the whole... And um, he was a Democrat, supposedly. <laughs> I guess I'd be called a dino. Democrat yeah. in name only. He's a Democrat from one of those big square states that nobody lives in. <laughs> and I got to tell you, I mean, I, a- Allison wrote, and she I, it's the same question. I, the first thing I thought of when I heard he was retiring re- uh, He's retiring, and he still didn't vote yes mm, mm-hmm, on the mm-hmm. on the background check mm-hmm. bill. It wouldn't have changed the mm-hmm, outcome. Mm-hmm. But our sense is is that the only reason anybody wouldn't have voted for that is because it's um, they're scared Politically, yeah. of the NRA and afraid they'll lose their job. Well, if he wasn't even going to run for re-election, why? Why do it? Yeah. So he must have really. So I, I, I I don't know. Or it, or or being craven is just such a uh, reflex for him now that he just voted out of. Well, I'm starting to worry because um, these next elections in yeah 14 yes you know there's some talk of can the Democrats take the House? Well, let me say right now that's a <laughs> a very 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 long shot. Mm-hmm. But. Can the Republicans take the Senate? Better chance of that, I would say. There's a better chance of that. So can you imagine yeah. the last two years of Obama's uh, tenure? No. He could have a totally Republican-controlled Senate. I mean, uh, Congress. Mm-hmm. And how... Well, I don't know. I give up. <laughs> how I'm could star- people do that to their country? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm starting to think... I mean, and I've heard it. I'm, I get so an, annoyed with the power that some of these, like, if you look at how many people, it, it, well, I, I have to take this up with the Founding Fathers, how many people are represented yeah. by a Senator Baucus? Yeah, right. And then how many people are represented by Senator yeah. Feinstein? Yeah. Or Schumer, any of those guys, yeah. Right. Now, for the House members, that's all pretty much proportion. They all sort of supposedly, yeah, have roughly the, the same. same number of people, yeah. 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 And doesn't that give. So, I mean, people have looked at, like, the background check uh, vote. But then if you look at who, how many Americans are represented by the senators who scotch the deal, right? Um, it's. It's a minority of a, most Americans, right? Well, most look, most Americans wanted, wanted this to pass. Way. Period. But, so you could you could make a pretty strong argument. I, I'm familiar with that argument because it, it is true that on many issues, you know, you will have regional variations, and farm states can absolutely thwart the will of the majority. I think this is that plus a whole other level of bizarre, which is that even people, even a majority of NRA members, support background checks. So you just got, yes, the system is undemocratic, but on top of that, with this particular vote, you've got people acting just in, in, in pure opposition to the stated preference and, you know, desire of, of their of their nominal constituents. It's unbelievable. Yeah. You know, the upside, I mean, the funny thing about it, the funniest take I've seen about Bacchus leaving was... Um, there are a lot of lobbyists who are really bumming right now because he's been around for so long and so many staffers have come through his office. And because of the position he occupies in the he's Senate. He's what, financial? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I think the, I think the, the finance chair. Anyway, yeah. a, a lot of pork goes through that guy, oh, across yeah. that guy's desk. And so over the years, a, a great way to make a decent living in Washington has been to serve on his staff for a while and then get a gig and jump into being the, a lobbyist yeah. so you can, you can press for sweetheart, you know, your bridges to nowhere and whatnot. And now all of those guys might, you know, I'm, I don't think this will really happen, but some of them might actually have to find honest work. Oh, I, oh my heart <laughs> bleeds. <laughs> and there yeah. is there is a chance for an upgrade here, because um, what's the guy, Brian Schweitzer, Schweitzer is the former He's governor. He's a pretty good guy. Yeah, all things considered. I think he'd still vote 
the well, wrong way on gun stuff. Well, because you're a Democrat but, yeah. from a big yeah. square yeah. state, I guess it's hard. Big square state. Yeah. 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 Okay. You know, when I was a weekend weather girl. <laughs> I like any story that begins this way. That was back in the 70s. <laughs> and I had this huge weather map. I've told you about this before. It was about the size of this wall. And so all those big square states were over there. Right. And they weren't labeled or anything. So <laughs> I would often, you know. Get them wrong. Yeah. Well, I would I say, no, I started uh. calling them. Big square state. That's where that comes from. <laughs> oh, that's I mean, I'm sitting in Wisconsin. Who gives a damn about those big square states? <laughs> the big square and, <laughs> states. I would say, and we have an occluded front over the big square states. That should be moving this way. Do you ever get like a tart letter from the Montana Chamber of Commerce nope. or anything like that? Nope. Okay. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, so looking at the uh, Democratic senators who have said, I'm out, Yeah. this is bad. Yep. Okay, Rockefeller in West Virginia, the odds of a Democrat winning there, I think, are very, very, very I don't know who their possible candidates are. Yeah, I don't are, either. I, but yeah. I, I mean, okay. Manchin, who won the last election, yeah, was a Democrat, of course. Well, but he's a Baucus Democrat. Yeah, well, oh, he's still a Democrat. that's the best you can hope for, okay. probably. Okay. Uh, here's some big square states. Yep. South Dakota. Yep. Montana. Well, that's uh, Baucus, isn't yep. it? Um, yes. And Michigan. <laughs> who resigned in Michigan? Oh, uh, Levin. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a loss. Now, yeah, it is. But, okay, so Michigan voted for Obama, but Michigan's one of those weird states like Pennsylvania mm-hmm. that votes for Obama, but in fact has a Republican governor mm-hmm. and a crazed Republican right-wing legislature. Right. 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 I don't know. New Jersey? We're probably in okay shape there. Lawton burns yeah. out. That's just as well. Um, I mean, Booker rescues people from fires and stuff. It's, you think Booker can do I it? I mean, I don't know. I just, he seems like a... Oh, brother. Unbelievable! Why are you looking at me like that? Because it's time to take a break? I thought so. <laughs> you know, we you weren't like, like a... just a finely <laughs> tuned machine now. The, the longer you work with somebody, it's just, you know, your mi- mind melt. <laughs> I didn't even have to look at the clock over right. there. I think we need to take our final break. We'll be right back. More is on the way with Lynn Cullen Live. Give the gift of beauty and youth this Mother's Day. Join us Saturday, May 11th for a day of rejuvenation, skin care, and fun at the Subicly Med Spa. Purchase one microdermabrasion and mom gets a free microdermabrasion. Log on to SwickleyMedSpa.com or call 412-259-8628 for details. Swickley Med Spa is conveniently located in downtown Swickley at 435 Broad Street. Happy Mother's Day from the Sewickley Med Spa. Go to BarkBargains.com for great deals on gift cards from your favorite local restaurants, bars, museums, attractions, and shows. Like us on Facebook or sign up for our weekly email updates for your chance to win a family four-pack of tickets to Kennywood. BarkBargains.com, Pittsburgh's best bargains. BarkBargains.com. The traditional light bulb, a groundbreaking invention in 1879. It's time we switch to longer-lasting Energy Star light bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Energy and the Ad Council. Have a question or an opinion? Call Lynn Cullen at 412-316-3381 or email lynn at pghcitypaper.com. Now, more with Lynn Cullen Live. Did someone say more? (laughs) (laughs) We're in the home stretch now, baby. All right. Okay. Okay. You can carry me, huh? All right. So I'm looking at the Wall Street Journal today. Yeah. And it's a a whole article about annoying voices. (laughs) Oh, oh, oh. okay. It. You're not in it. (laughs) Well, if I had a larger audience, yeah. Yeah, I think I might be. Um, And then they go through all these possible voices that are trouble. The person who speaks too loudly. Okay. Mm Mm-hmm. They say Chris Matthews is one of those. Sure. 
Actually, they drive me crazy. The person who talks like this, the up talker, oh, the yeah. up talk. Yeah, yeah. These are all things that like will get in your way in the world out there. They say. Okay. Okay, for an up talker, they say the most uh, obvious one for anybody who watches HBO's Girls would be um, uh, Shoshana's no. voice, which is even without the up talk is pretty annoying. Yeah, yeah, she's just annoying all the way down. That's uh, David Mamet's daughter. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> then they have, and I take umbrage at this. They actually have Marge Simpson on the list. Oh. And they say she's the irritator. She speaks in screechy, nasal, or shrill tones. It's a little cheap to have a cartoon character in there. I mean, the whole point of cartoon character yeah, voices yeah, is supposed yeah. to be extreme. Okay, so then I, you could put me there. Sure. Right, because okay. I do yeah. have a, you know, a voice like that. Then there's an immature voice. but That's yeah. a woman speaking and sounding like a girl. There's no male equivalent for that? or No, I don't mm. think there is. There's the Ted Baxter voice, the poseur, yeah. the person who like comes on, like sure. he has a voice like this who really doesn't. There's something called the creaky talker, uh, and that's they end in a sentence in a gravelly growl. Huh. My which, kid, when my kid wakes up, he always does that. Really, and yeah. they, they find that some people find that sexy. Then there's the whisperer, a la Jackie Kennedy, oh. who that voice drives me. Is that why you just did it? Yes. Oh, okay, I see. It's like you just... And I think it's people who talk really softly. I always consider it hostile. Hmm. If you're talking to me like this, you're forcing me to really work yeah. at listening hmm. to you. Hmm. So I think that that's a passive-aggressive kind of a thing. Oh, I'm coming on like I'm just a meek and mild little thing here. But I see that you're all gathered really closely around me. Oh, I see. So you that's a way I of mean? commanding. Yo, yo, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and then they got the monotone voice. Sure. And that's uh, like Clint Eastwood. And that drives me crazy. Get off of my lawn. Uh, Actually, he does the whisper, too, really. And he does that gravelly thing, too. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, so his voice can be pretty annoying. Um <laughs> But here's just the just ask any chair. <laughs> here's my um, here's what freaked me out. New research shows that the sound of a person's voice Uh-oh. strongly influences how he or she is seen. <laughs> the sound of a speaker's voice matters twice as much as the content of the speaker's message. Jeez. The great thing about you, Lynn, is what form and content are perfectly oh. married. Dear Lord, you have you have Dear exactly Lord. the instrument. I do. <laughs> well, anyway, in this Wall Street Journal article, they quote uh, the president of something called Clearly Speaking, which is a coaching company. Her name is Linda Stuckey, and guess where her company is. <laughs> In Pittsburgh. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, sure. So I thought maybe nobody, nobody... I should have, maybe should I have uh, uh, Linda Stuckey in? Yeah, and maybe. Yeah, she can give good. me lessons on the air and we can try to tone this down a little bit. Oh, I saw, my what, dead I saw body. what you did there, by the way. You did? Yeah. You were doing the up talk thing. I'm just, I use my voice and I'm not, I, I know my voice is, um, you know, I hack and I cough. I, I'm not nice to my. Yeah. Vocal cords. Yeah. But it's an instrument. It is. And I say, play it! <laughs> play it! God gave you an instrument <laughs> to make your presence known. Yes. Isn't really? What I a agree. gift. Yes. And most people are just like, <laughs> they don't use it. Yeah. <laughs> he said, He's quietly. Me such a look. No, no. It's all right, all... okay, all right, okay, okay, all right. Uh, oh, I know what I wanted to talk to you about. Uh-oh. 
Are you opening up the folder now? Yeah. Oh, yeah, here it comes. Yeah. What is oh, this? Oh, yeah. It was, um, oh, yeah. It was, I remember, UPM, I can see. Okay. They're going to, they're suing the city. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. They are. UPMC suing us. Yes. For what? D- sort of defaming them. No, something. it's it's a little more complicated. But it's also but it's sort of like that. Like we're a person. Right. So what they're what, what, what the the basis of their suit is that they're being discriminated against. Right. That, that essentially that the city has that there are them rules out. right, that there are rules for if you want to challenge a a nonprofit's tax exempt status and the city did not follow those procedures and that therefore UPMC's due process rights, which is a civil right, the right of every American to expect their government to follow a due process. UPMC due process, is not an American. Right, but UPMC is not an as, American. As Mitt Romney reminded us, ah! corporations are people, my oh, friends. Oh, Jesus, God! Oh, and under the law, they are. Under the law, they are. Oh. I can't say. I mean, look. I, I, I think it's funny. I mean, I, it's kind of funny, like when you hear, like, "Oh, they're saying their civil rights are violated." Ha ha ha! They're a nonprofit, but this is—I mean, this isn't like some out of left field legal strategy. No, this no, is I this is that. this is this is well within the bounds, and I'm not surprised that they're doing it. Look, if you're UPMC, you would rather. Here's if I'm UPMC, this is what I'm thinking. If this thing actually goes to to. You know, goes works its way through the courts and all. There's going to be depositions. There's going to be all kinds of discovery and all. And and I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of stuff about my financials and the you know all that stuff somehow gets out into the court record and into the public dialogue. That even if I win the case at the end of the day, I've probably got a couple years worth of you know embarrassing discoveries or whatever that I might not necessarily want to share with the rest of the world. So I would much rather challenge this whole thing sort of preemptively and say, this needs to be stopped butt cold here because this is a violation of... And they they did this in federal court? Yeah. Even though the city sued them in... In state court. State court? Yeah, but I mean, and a federal... obviously, the federal law, they Civil rights are a federal... Civil rights. Is a, yeah. Yeah, so it's not a... It's not a... Again, it's, it's a... So those are then two separate things going on. Yeah, I mean, because it's the yeah. state... This, for the city to, to file where it did make sense, because, of course, it's the state that... Right. Set the policy for what constitutes a nonprofit. Right. So that made sense for them to do, and what UPMC is doing now. At least you know I'm not a I'm not an expert on jurisdictional disputes, but it, it seems to make sense to me. What would be a job that like you would go home every night? You would not be able to ever leave the job. The job would come with you wherever you were. <laughs> And just lie there uh, on top of you, suffocating you. Other than causing... the one I have now, you mean? <laughs> no, yeah, no, I'm thinking of what has to be. For me, what, what would be the most horrific job in town? Public relations. Oh, yeah. For UPMC. Yeah. Who does that? Uh, a guy named Paul Wood. Oh, that's right, Mr. Wood. Well, you're forced to. Well, I yeah. don't know. No, I think he's. A, I think the best ones are true believers in their cause. They re, yeah. There's a great. There's actually a great story. I think it was in the Tribune Review about how the the head of Highmark, this Winken Wender guy, said Wink he and Wender. Yeah, said he and um Winkenwender. he and uh he had spoken with Romoff, the head of UPMC, and they were going to get together at some point and talk about you know whether there was any prospect for continuing their you know network relationship. And UPMC was like, that is a complete and utter fabrication. <laughs> like these guys can't even these guys can't even agree on whether they've agreed. They you know agree. what I mean? It's yeah, just like it's, it's just it's the level of the level of just dysfunctionality there. And the thing is, who knows who's right? You know, I mean, I wouldn't put it past the uh, high mark to you know sort of want to portray themselves as being the ones you know taking advantage of a chance to portray themselves as the ones with their hands out, you know, and arms extended. And it's just you just don't even know anymore. Uh, Incidentally, there's a uh, just speaking of this stuff. There's, um, uh, there's an effort now to unseal some of the court record. In the there's been this running suit that originally started out as alleging that Highmark and and uh, UPMC were in cahoots with each other. Um, although the 
the contours of that case have changed substantially. That this this the case itself still continues, and there are apparently millions of documents um, under seal right now, including depositions with highly placed officials in both organizations. And there is an effort being made to unseal those. And the Post Gazette filed um, a motion to do so last week, I believe. So, um, you know, a lot going on there. Sunday, when I was seated across the river there at PNC Park uh, mm-hmm. watching the Pirates win. Yes, yes. Yeah, uh-huh. right, right. Watching the Pirates win. And I was great seats and I was facing of course the city skyline. And I just couldn't help but look the, like the it if you could imagine it as a chess game with all of right. the, the right. S- buildings being pieces, right? Right. right. And I, it feels like it's a game, a right. big game to the death. Right. And there's that big UPMC piece. Right. And there's almost as big, but yeah. not this Highmark piece. And their names are on top. Of right. It. You know, it's UPMC and Highmark. And you could just sort of, it just, you know what I mean? It's like these two big uh, castles and they're fighting and we're. Uh, the collateral right, damage. Right. It's their chess game, but we're the ones who get rooked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, very good. Thank you. I wasn't sure you meant that for a second. I No, oh, I did. Yeah. And look, your lovely wife has written back. Uh-oh. She didn't oh, like it. She's still, she's still she's, going on you. She's got a head of steam here. <laughs> Wait, she, that's not her. That's the Boilermaker Jazz Band. Well, they're Melody good people, too. Over the reds there. I don't think they're as pretty as Melanie, but here. Uh, well, how come it didn't come up? I don't know. There you go. Okay. She says, I think this is the story I saw in the evening news last Uh week. Not that that caller wants to hear it. (laughs) Oh, yeah. She's got a head of steam. (laughs) Wow. That's so unlike her. (laughs) As CP said, does she call you CP? Never. (laughs) Well, what's interesting, as CP, and it just occurred to me, that your initials are the same as your paper. Yes, and also the Communist Party. Chris. <laughs> yeah. And cerebral palsy. Yes. Or child porn. <laughs> Sadly. That's when, when, when we became aware of that is when we started changing the logo, as a matter of fact. You're already taking an awful lot of chances being an alt-weekly, so. Okay, uh, back to Melanie. Yes. As Chris Potter said, until we're all willing to pay a lot more for produce, then don't malign the migrant workers who are getting paid next to nothing so that we can get cheap strawberries at Walmart. Did I do that right, Melanie? Yeah, that was pretty good. Okay. I get pretty upset about this issue. Thanks for listening. <laughs> she does get upset about it. Well, it's good. She's a big believer in the, in the cause. Of of just what fairness yeah. of equal yeah. yeah. end of end of we set we we depress the wages the consumers of America depress right. wages because we demand cheap produce cheap products and, and no American is going to work for that uh-huh. so you bring in uh, yeah and in fairness to Americans our own wages are being depressed That's so correct. it's harder and harder not to do that it's That's very... right it's well it's the Walmartization yeah. of of right. the American economy. Yeah, you know, you, you you sort of train us to think that the greatest value um, in our cho- consumer choices is simply price. And the lower the price, the better right. the value. Right. Which, believe me, is more than disputable. Yes. And so people flock to Walmart, right? And Walmart is able to keep those prices low because they insist that everybody who they buy from lowers their workers' wages right. so that they every, they just keep depressing the wages to keep the prices low. And so eventually nobody has any money left to spend, right. and the only place they can shop is Walmart. Well, I think that is such a brilliant strategy. Stop and think about it. Yeah, they I mean, create their own consumers by impoverishing the workers. Right. It's the opposite of the Henry Ford model. Exactly. Where you, where you created your own where you created your own customers by enriching your workers. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, it's been and you know, I mean I think part of the issue too is is that you know, as we have come to see ourselves less as citizens and more as consumers, 
you know, where you shop feels like that's the only agency you have. You have no power. We feel we have no power if we get laid off or, you know, our wages get cut or whatever. So this is the one thing we can kind of do for ourselves. Right. You know, it's the same thing with the, you know, to kind of touch back at what we started off talking about, you know, it's the same thing with like retirement plans or whatever. You have all these people say, you need to save a million dollars. And it's all, and I'm all for financial responsibility. You know, it's fine to like, you know, give people advice about, you know, spending within your means and all that stuff. But there's a certain point at which, you put all of this burden on the individual to save for their own retirement. And nobody talks, everybody talks about that, but nobody really in any sustainable kind of way talks about, well, what if you just aren't making enough money to do it? Like, what if what you happens need every to every red cent that you can scrap? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of people who aren't, right. look, there's a, obviously there's a lot of people spending more than they could, but honestly, there's a lot of people, people who, who are just betting, getting by. Right. And we just, we do not talk about that. And we find all these things. So as as this charming email writer says, I mean, you know, we've we've import these workers in because they they do it for cheap, or we import the goods in from from overseas because they'll do it cheap, and it, all of it is this sort of it's it's just keeping the balls of, in the air, right? That's all we're doing. Fundamentally, I don't know that this is sustainable over the long term, but. As long as you can, as long as you can depress the cost just slightly more, or at the same level as you de- as you depress the wages, you can keep it going for a long time. Think of what Walmart did. They destroyed all these wonderful little ma and pa mm-hmm. stores, all lo- all these local businesses um, that were part of the fabric of every city that made every city a little different. Right. Um, and in some ways, Walmart isn't even the worst. You know, I mean, at least they at least they have made some efforts to do things like buying more local produce and supporting. There are initiatives like that, and those are legitimate things that are happening. But yeah, I mean, it, it, there's no question what this broader trend is. It's not just Walmart. It's I mean, they're very good at it, obviously, but it's bigger than that. Well, they're not as good as they used to be. There, I, I saw the other day they built. Jess, do you remember those numbers? They built. Last year, 400 some new stores. It was mm. some unbelievable mm. number. Mm. But, they got rid of- but they reduced their <laughs> right. workforce. Right. You add 400 right. big Walmart stores and you. Re- it doesn't even make sense. And now the customer satisfaction is just yep. people. I said, we've yep. had it up to here. Yep. You go in there, the shelves aren't even stocked. Yep. Yep. Nobody's there to help. Nobody knows anything. Yeah. Yep. So, you know. This like, greed of wanting it just to squeeze it a little yeah. bit more and yeah. more and more. There's a point at which you destroy your brand. If that's right. Else. You, well, let's hope. Yeah. Fat chance. Some horrific hydra headed monster will emerge worse than Walmart. <laughs> that's right. We'll be longing for the good old days. Okay. Would you like to see the um, video of, and, and I know we have to leave, uh, would you want me to forward you a video of a uh, sloth grooming a kitten? <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how I could say no to that question. It's oh. the best. And, you know, it takes about four minutes, and it gets a little repetitive in the middle when he keeps just sort of like, oh, sure. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's the same but, at my house. Yeah, but... <laughs> But, oh, my God. Yeah. Shall I'll, we send that to you? Sure, and I'll reply with uh, film footage of my kid getting his first haircut. How's that? Oh, I'd love that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did he handle it well? Uh, we, we went to a great place for this, which is these two, um, these two nice, very nice ladies in Castle Shannon who, um, I'm not sure how Melanie found them exactly, but it was perfect. Like, we go there, because we're kind of looking for, like, a traditional barber shop, but then it's like, you know, do you really want your, you know, kind of old man barbers with the field and stream and whatever? And so we go into this place, and, and the first thing I notice is they've got an issue of Harper's and the New Yorker in the rack, and I thought, this this is a good place for me. <laughs> Granted, they were two years old, but I mean, still. So um, I wish I could remember the name, because they were very like sweet ladies, and they were, yeah, they were they were very sweet with him, and... um you know, handled it. He didn't I, cry. There was a, no, there was initial bit of trauma, but he, he got into it and um, actually enjoyed it rather well. They were, the, the woman was singing to him, which helped, and which would not have happened at a typical barbershop of the kind I'm accustomed to attending myself. So, 
I won't even go there. All right. Well, we're done. And I understand there's lots of rain coming our way. And then temperature plummets. Yeah. Right? Yep. That's what I hear. Hey, uh, never mind. I was going to say. I'm going to be appearing at Kappa tonight with a bunch of other people. Show up if you want. I think it's a free concerty kind of a thing. I'm doing a reading. Sally Wiggins doing a reading. Uh The kids are doing all kinds of stuff, showing their stuff. You and Sally getting the band back together. Amen. Yeah. So that's at 7 tonight. Be there, be square, and I swear it is free, I think. <laughs> I swear. God knows I ain't that. getting paid a single cent. <laughs> okay. All righty. Toodaloo. Lynn Cullen Live, Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and archived at pghcitypaper.com. The opinions expressed on Lynn Cullen Live are those of the host and do not necessarily reflect the viewpoints of Pittsburgh City Paper, Steel City Media, and its advertisers.